I'm here tonight to ask you for a resolution of support uh, to pursue a Clean Ohio Conservation Fund grant to buy a large chunk of property from the Grail on the east side of Loveland. Because this is serious and fun, I wanted to give you a little more information uh, about myself, about Cardinal, and about what we'd like to do out there. So I'll, I'll try to keep this brief and a lot, of, a lot of material in a hurry, but our mission is to work with communities and people to take care of green space, open space, and agricultural land. So you'll see that um, we do that all over Southwest Ohio. So we are an official 501c3. We are a nationally accredited land trust, and you know we're actually going for reaccreditation this year from the uh, Land Trust Alliance, which is a national organization. And what that means is we have the governance, we have the finances, we have the, the rules and regulations uh, in order to operate forever. We are a forever organization. When we protect property, we mean that we protect it forever. Um, 450 members, lots of volunteers, and we work all over Southwest Ohio, and, and we're looking at branching into Northern Kentucky and even Southeast Indiana. So what is a land trust? A lot of people ask me that. You know, we, we own land, or we own an interest in land, and right now we're up to 700 acres that we own and about 8,300 acres that we have an easement on. And those easements preserve conservation and agricultural values. So family farms, um, you know, natural space, uh, endangered species, we have quite a variety of, uh, of values in our portfolio. How we're funded, a lot of people ask that. We have members, so, so we have memberships. We have donors. Uh, we work with major gift folks and major donors, foundations, plan gifts. So in a wide variety of ways, we're, we're funded by the public as a nonprofit. But, but as an organization, and, and I forgot to tell you a little bit about me, so, so I hope you guys don't look at me like some outsider and don't hold it against me, but I grew up in Milford. <laughs> and I would ride my bike up Price Road and down this road to get on the bike trail to ride tomorrow on the, on the bike trail way back when. But I, I worked for the Nature Conservancy for a number of years. I was a director of science and in charge of science and stewardship of the state of Ohio. And I worked for conservation impact planning across North America, including um, Central America and the Caribbean. But there's no place as beautiful as home and right here. Um, but one of those things in doing conservation impact planning was figuring out what to care about. What should we focus on to get the most for a dollar out of conservation? And we've got a short list of, of things, and it's wetlands. This is a wetland I was telling you guys about in East Fork. You know, native hibiscus blooming, a uh, uh, 60 acre wetland next to East Fork Lake State Park. Habitat for threatened and endangered species. Ecologically sound agriculture. We don't just protect farms. We protect the farms where people are doing the right thing for water quality and for habitat. Local food. So we have one of the last family farms in the city of Cincinnati that we protect. And we don't grow the local food, we protect the land, but our tenant grows food for local folks. Including hops. So there is a local Ohio hops plant that no one knows about or uses, and we're growing that to see what happens. Uh, mature forests are another thing that we focus on. You know, protecting those, those wooded lands that are climate resistant and climate resilient. Urban open space. We haven't done much urban open space yet, so I just grabbed a, a picture, but we are working with some of the uh, vacant lots in downtown Cincinnati that could come to fruition to be urban open space. So I, I work on green, umbre green umbrellas, green space impact team. So we've come up with a plan of how to protect green space across the region. And it's a really neat way of working with a mapper that um, a mapping tool that anyone can use on OKI's website that we shove all these layers together that include streams that are degraded, uh, you know, where there's no canopy cover, where there's low income, high minority, and cancer clusters. That's where you see all the red. Those are areas that need to be restored. And on the outside, where you see all the green and dark green, those are those areas that are, have the best of all the 
mature forest endangered species. Those are areas that need to be protected. So we've created a model for everyone to utilize to do conservation. Recent successes, we have new nature preserves. Um, we have an eagle camera, I'll show you a couple photos. We have made progress on letting kids come to our bar farm, that, that's that farm in Cincinnati. Um, we've had uh, preserve openings, volunteer work days, tree plantings, restored prairie, uh, added committee members, and we've done some fun stuff. Um, I grew up on the Little Miami River. This shot is from the Little Miami River. We have 120 acre nature preserve right where the Little Miami River goes into the Ohio. And it's where we have Bonnie and Clyde, that's our eagles. So if, if you um, get a chance, I know uh, Little Miami Inc. has some eagles not too far from here, but ours have three babies every year. So <laughs> they're a little bit better. Um, we're hoping to work with students to study eagle behavior this year, uh, college college kids, uh, because there's so much we can learn. I, I received a call that said an adult eagle attacked one of the babies. This was two weeks ago. You gotta go save it, you gotta go do something. We wanna know, we don't. It, it, actually, the dad was pushing the kid out of the nest. It was time to fly. <laughs> and there's all three of them right before they flew this year. So, you know, it's a wonderful uh, viewer experience and educational experience for folks. Um, our bar farm in the city is pretty neat. This is Spring Grove Cemetery down here. So we are pretty close to that and it's just a, a big mecca. We have uh, an active farm here where we've restored native, native grass for grazing and we have a nature preserve that's right next door to it. So we're hoping to engage the public and enjoy the outdoors. And you can see downtown from this place all the way down to Mill Creek Valley. It's beautiful. There's, there's Mr. Barr that we worked with, with his gals. Uh, we restored a pond, and I think that's important because we'd like to do that again, but it's neat to fix a dam, put habitat structure back in, and put in fish so people can enjoy a recreational opportunity. You see, um, restoring native prairie is, is hard for someone that hasn't done it, but we've done a lot of it. And you really just need to put seed in the ground, get some water when it touches soil and magic happens. And that's what we've seen happen out there. Next to my foot, it's hard to see, but close up, you can see little seeds inside grooves. You can't plant this stuff deep. And there's what it looks like now, first year planting. We've got lots of native uh, warm season grasses and wildflowers and all stuff that cows can eat. I do not like the truck on fire, but we do work with corporate partners and we work with uh, the Bosom Auto Group. And, you know, this is a prairie burn that we did up near Wilmington. And, you know, we, we have our vehicles and we work them. We take folks on hikes and learn about forests. Uh, we participate in corporate um, lunches, and that was at p and we have a 220 acre nature preserve up in Wilmington with endangered uh, Indiana bats on it. And you know, the, we, we tried to get back to some of the, the native plantings that include wild plum thickets. We know the science out there uh, points to bats having higher uh, success at catching food when there's white flowering plants nearby. So we're looking to help that. But again, the volunteer work days, uh, technology, we've got a drum program, pretty high quality. So we monitor what we do and, and where we do it and how we remove invasives. Um, this is one of the farms that we, we monitor. We, we've cut our monitoring time by 75% by having a drone program. Farmers love it. This is a drone selfie. <laughs> um, the year ahead. So, so this really is, is what we're here to talk to you about. So what we'd really like to do is work with you all, work with partners, work with the Grail, and restore and protect this property. So I've been part of restoration projects of forest, of prairie, of meadows, and we'd love to do that out here. Um, we'd like to build a two mile trail, maybe more, primitive trail for now, but we'll work on more later. Um, Restore the pond. I think the pond has an issue. There's two ponds, but the one's pretty good. And with a little help, we can bring that thing back. And work with the public to restore and utilize the buildings. You know, I know those buildings may 
may not look so great, but I think there's good bones in there and it's, it's something I think is very fundable and donors would like that we can fix them up and make that our center of operations and then have the community use it. Um, we'd also work with health practitioners. You know, one of the big kicks um, that's gaining popularity is, is working with health practitioners to prescribe nature as a remedy. There are lots of ailments, anxiety, diabetes, stress, tension that can be treated with nature. And I am talking to a couple different hospital groups right now to work with us and work out of ODA to have people come in and then get outside and enjoy the place. So the Ohio Revised Code in applying for the grant states that a nonprofit needs to obtain a formal resolution of support from the local government entities. And that's what we're here to do. I'm asking you for that. So if you guys could entertain giving us that support, I'm not looking for money, I'm not looking for funding. Just I need a, a letter of support that says we can apply for the grant. That's it.